life on the rocks, no chase. What's going on, everybody? My name is A.T. from Headcrack Studios, headcrackstudios.com. And I am back again today to talk about the myth, the legend, and that is the new VSX by Stephen Slate Audio. So um, real quick, right off the rip, I just want to show you guys where to put this plugin. And uh, shout out to Stephen Slate Audio for hooking me up with the headphones and the plugin. This thing is legit, guys. So real talk, I just want to, this video is all about showing you how to get started on VSX. So first things first, I got a session open, right? Stems, all color coded because I'm OCD. And um, open up mix. I am on Studio One. If you're on Pro Tools, same thing. You just want to create a master fader. So on the master fader or the main out, right? Your master track. VSX, baby. Just throw it right in. And then here we go. Here's the fun. Boom. So off rip. Right when you open it, you have one, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to run through it really quick. Um... Go to settings really quick. Boom. And if it's your first time working with VSX, you're going to get this thing to pop up. What I had to go to, I had to go to settings for the walkthrough. It's going to pop up for you instantly. And this is just letting you know and giving you the run through of how to use it. Right. So it's going to say position your headphones. Oh, let's go back really quick. Let me get out of this. Just want to run through this really quick. Sorry, guys. So look, welcome to VSX. This warning is basically telling you, and I'll show you later, it's basically telling you not to bypass the plugin on the master fader, right? The plugin actually has its own uh, bypass, which is better than your DAWs. I'll explain a little later. This right here is basically telling you to position your headphones on your ear correctly, right? You just really want to make sure they fit and they have a tight suction on your on your ears because that way you're going to get the right amount of high end and all that good stuff and the emulations are going to sound perfect and right here this is just basically telling you about browsing the rooms um obviously right and this two second pause right i guess that's what that means that's basically if you click that have that option i'll show you later if you have that option on every time you change a room or change a speaker it'll have a two second pause in between that way you can let your ears adjust and that's about it guys i know i ran through it really quick so if you have any questions uh just go uh comment below trust me i got you guys so here we go right we have this the plugin up and i'm just gonna play By the way, this is Wraith. This is an upcoming song, one of my songs. It's called Wraith. Shout out to Player One Beats. He's the guy that made this beat and it's fire. So let's go. All right. So I let it go that far. For a reason. So as you can tell, it sounds weird, right? And if you don't have the VSX on and you have regular headphones on or you're listening on your phone, um, I believe the effect is going to print to this video. So it will sound a little weird and it's going to sound really low. So here's the thing, guys. I'm going to walk you through this. So through all my stems in, right? All my stems are as you would or as they would be. Sorry, let me correct this one. All the stems are as they would be if you drag the stems in any DAW, right? Any session, right? Everything's zeroed out, even the vocals. Well, no, they're not, because I think I have automation, but whatever. Here we go. So, first thing you want to do in gain staging, right? Is highlight everything, the whole beat, and make sure you can hear the vocals. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you something when I do that. So let's just play it from where the beat drops and the vocals start. Right here. All right, cool. All right, so that's where I like to start at, right? That's just uh, a thing I do. I just turn every instrument down every stem down until i hear the vocals that way i can uh gain stage accordingly and turn things up and down but obviously it's hip-hop and you want the vocals so that's the first thing i do so now in doing that right 
I know because I've been doing this a while and I'm pretty sure you guys have been doing this a while that when I go to play it, there's no way that <laughs> this track is negative 21 dB. And that's like that for a reason. So like I said earlier, you have the level match bypass. This is the reason why you don't bypass the plugin on the, your DAW. You do it here. So this is where you're going to want to level match and you're going to want to level match here too on your output level. So I'm just going to go to my first setting real quick. This is the one I like. And I'm going to just go to the near fields and let's just level match real quick and get this, uh, get the levels to where I know they should be before, before mixing. You dig? I like my life on the rocks, no chase. And when she switch, I just ghost in the rain. All right, so that sounds pretty good, right? It's not too, uh, sorry about my little notifications. It's not too high, right? And all the stems are, nothing is mixed, nothing is really leveled out. Like the 808s and everything are way too loud, but this is good. So this is what you call the super the VSX HD linear emulation is now active. So this is basically just bypassing the plugin, but it's giving you some, um, some VSX HD. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain it. So that way you bypass that way. So now when we're listening in the studio, quote unquote, it's low. So now we know. Turn it up. And when she switch, I just ghost in the race. Now there you go. So I typically tend to start pretty high. I'm not gonna lie. I just turn it all the way up. And if you guys have been rocking with this, I'm new to this too. I've done like three mixes on this so far, straight from scratch in VSX. So if you guys have been rocking with this and you've been working with it and you know it, just feel free to comment below and um, start a conversation. Cause trust me, I'm learning as I go too, but I just wanted to help you guys get started. So that was one of the problems I did have was uh, learning how to gain stages. So now that I have the knobs all the way turned up, right? And I know that that's pretty much a starting point for uh, a record. Um, now you just follow through with the, um, <laughs> with the startup, with the walkthrough told you guys. So this is one of my favorites, right? So Arkin Studios. So let's just go to five. I got the headphones. I don't mind changing that one for you guys. So let's browse rooms. So this is everything you have. Sorry. You got NRG. You got Arkin Studios. You got the Howie Weinberg Mastering uh, Studio. You got an electric car, SUV, audio file room, which is a dope room and dope looking room. I wish I had that. Um, you have the club, which is big for us. You have the boom box, big for us. And now you got a bunch of headphones, right? You got the 650s, you got the 770s, you got the M50s, you got the pods, which is dope. You got the wire. This, these are emulating AirPods. And then the one that I use a lot is the HD linear, right? So, in essence, right, guys, I know this is a lot to take in. And um, I like I said, I'll, I'll take questions and I'll answer and we can have an ill conversation about this. But um, let's just say the club is one of my favorites. You just um, on a laptop, two finger click, save or on a mouse, you just right click, secondary click, I guess, save. Boom. So now when you go away from it, back to home, you browse through your and look, it says it right in the middle. Um, go to five club. So here's the deal. Actually, let's play it in the club real quick. I like my life on the rocks, no chase. Yeah, sounds crazy. And when you, if you have the headphones on, it'll sound even crazier. It sounds super realistic. Um, this depth knob, um, according to what I've noticed and what I noticed it does, it basically, um, emulates the depth, uh, the depth, sorry about that, the space that you have. So, you know, in, in a real studio, let's go to a real studio, you know, you'll get up sometimes, especially if you're listening on the far fields, AKA the bigs, um, you'll step away from them. Right. So I typically like it around here. So it gives you less room tone and more of the, of the sound, but it's also still, you know, emulating the speakers. So you're still getting the room sound, but without the extra reflections as if you're further away from the speakers. If you get what I, if you get what I mean. So, um, yeah, when I'm mixing, mixing, this is basically what I do. If I'm going to mix this record, I want to start in the studio that I like, and this is the one that I picked. And 
I want to go to the near fields first because honestly, that's what I would do in a studio. So. I like my life on the rocks, no chase. And then, trust me, when you're listening in these headphones, it sounds like you're in a studio, which is dope because I'm actually working and mixing from home most of the time now. Thank you, COVID. And. Uh, my basement is not treated whatsoever, but now I got these. I got these rooms that I can actually mix and reference in. So my suggestion to you guys is mix and ref mix in these in the studios. Obviously, you see my one and two. So I got one and two, which is nice because I could fly all over the world and go to two different studios within seconds. <laughs> and um, so then when you get the mix going, how you like it? So let's say the mix is fine, how I like it right now. So near fields are obviously your near fields. Not a lot of bass, mids. I mean, not a lot of bass, sorry. A lot of highs and a lot of mids. So this is obviously good when you're mixing the vocals and you're mixing to see, you're mixing your bass and kick to see how they translate, right? Without a bunch of bass. I stay in these two a lot. And then I go to midfield. This gives you a lot more bass. I like my so now you're seeing how it balances with the vocals, right? Because if you're in the near fields too much, you tend to boost the hell out of that bass. And, you know, once you put it on something like this, you'll see, oh, okay, it's too loud. It's taking over the vocals, taking over the snare. And then the bigs, the far fields, all right? These are when you got your mix basically where you want it. You test it out. This is the closest thing we usually get as engineers to the club without going to the club. So um, near field, midfield, I usually stay here mixing. Then I stay in the studio again. I go to these because these sound different. These are the NS10s, obviously emulations. And then you got the mids and then you got the bigs in NRG, right? So same thing, same process. I'll just listen to them, tweak accordingly, right? And then now, right, say I got the mix going. Now is when you go in. Now here's the SUV. Here's the SUV. And this is going to sound dope. It's going to sound literally like a car. Now, pardon the non-mix right now, because this is definitely not mixed. But yeah, so now you're listening in the car, which is usually where we all first go from the studio, right? <laughs> and then, now you got the boom box. Why is this important? Because a lot of people might not be listening on this kind of boom box, but maybe, because it looks pretty modern, right? So they might have this in their job, they might have this wherever, right? You want to mix and make sure your mix translates over a bunch of different sources that's you know that's mixing 101 and i'm pretty sure you guys know that so you want to test it out in a boom box i like my life on the rocks no change boom so now you know that everything's cutting through and then obviously this sounds like crap because it's not mixed but this is just for the purpose of showing you guys and then now yep we did the club i like my life and i found this super helpful sorry I smacked the mic. I found this super helpful in mixing this song because as y'all can hear, this 808 is real dirty. Shout out to player one. He knows I like my 808s dirty. So this is real crunchy and dirty. And um, I had it booming in the studio settings. I had it in here. And Arkin and NRG and I had it banging. I'm like, oh, it sounds good. Put it in the club. It was OD for lack of a better term. It was too much. So I had to tone it down, which is exactly what these are intended to do which is dope and um yeah i used a lot of those and i used the airpods I, I got the real airpods here but being able to not have to bounce my mix and then x you know email it to whoever email it to myself or email it to my boy and then download it and then listen on my iphone i can just listen to it right here and then i listen to it a lot on hd linear and the reason why i did is because hd linear <laughs> as as redundant as it sounds is super clear and super linear right so you're just getting the sound for what it is these headphones are good to reference in too because a lot of people use these right so you want to see how they sound in these headphones but this right here is one of the kickers because it just sounds you get the sound for what it is and it taught me a bunch about um what i was lacking and what i needed to cut more and um it just gave me a super big perspective so, um, yeah, and then obviously I use the car a lot. Electric guitar sounds, a I mean guitar, sorry. Electric car sounds a little different. And audio file room is cool because not a lot of people have this room set up in their house, but 
it's good to listen to it in this because of the different speakers, right? The different kind of speakers. I forget the names of these, but I know they're super expensive. And um, I've yet to master, so maybe I'll do another tutorial about mastering because I'm pretty sure I want to master in this room. But I did reference it in this room because, you know, mastering engineers do get the mix and they have to listen to it. And I tweaked, right? I like my life on the rocks, no chase. Yeah, see, and you see how I turned that knob, the depth knob, up and down. It gave me a little bit more room reflections, right? Um, I use it, like I said, as how close or how far you are from the speakers. It's probably something totally different, but uh, that's how I explain it, and that's how I use it. And then for every room, you got your low, low mid, mid, low high, and highs, right? And I, I think, is this one turned up for everyone? Yeah, so I do have the highs turned up a little bit for every, uh, for every room. I'm just going to turn it down. Yeah, so I guess where I had it, I was playing around before I uh, mixed this song, so I guess where I had it didn't make that much of a difference. But yeah, you can definitely EQ your rooms too if you feel like uh, the rooms just don't sound how you want them to sound, or if you or if you're familiar with these kind of rooms, anything goes, man. Boom, and here's the the two second. Uh, PC. See? So I just switched from midfield to near field. So let me go from near field to midfield, and you're going to see that two seconds. I like my life. Right. So it's almost like smelling some coffee beans while, when you're in the cologne shop, right? You want to reset your nose. You want to reset your ears really quick. Um, so then, right? When you're getting it going and you just want to keep referencing back to just regular headphones. Hit the level match bypass, and now you the plugin is bypassed, right? But it's bypassed in the plugin because they do their own super magical VSX HD linear emulation is now active. <laughs> so it's for improved referencing. Whatever wizardry they do, it just sounds better than if you just uh unplug it. And also, I should say, sorry, by um it's in this too. The first one. Um the levels will definitely kind of murder your eardrums if you just bypass especially bypassing while listening so just don't <laughs> and um that's about it guys i just want to make sure i'm not missing anything for you guys i know i kind of went over it quick you got your fade five um you got your near field so yeah back to what i was saying um, if you guys have your own process and you're using this, please let me know in the comments. Definitely want to uh, keep learning this and keep um, interacting with you guys. Right. We're all scholars. Um, I would just mix in the studios. Right. Almost do it how you would do it when you're doing it. <laughs> like if you really were in these studios, mix in the studios and then take it out. And then again, you don't have to. But I don't recommend mixing in a car. But if you got some things that are sticking out in the car. I would definitely tweak while you're in the car because that's the beauty of this. You dig? So if I'm here. I like my life on the oh, I don't like the I don't like the 808. That, uh, there you go. You don't even need to get out of the car and go back to the studio to tweak, right? But I would save the tweaks for you know for your secondary things. But the main mixing stay in the studio. Um, that's about it. These I'm just answering the questions I had when I started, guys, using this. And, um, oh yeah, here we go. Sorry about the pause. Here's what I want to say. Keep this on auto bypass on export. So this will just bypass the plugin when you export the track. So you don't need to do anything. I know it sounds too good to be true, but trust me, it really works. I got a mix of this record that I was playing in the beginning of this video. Um, it really works. You bounce the record down and everything will sound like it should you know what i mean because technically you you haven't really heard this unless you hit this right unless you hit this you haven't really heard this outside of being in the emulation so when you actually take it to a real car and everything it's going to sound like a real mix and it's going to sound pretty damn good honestly because i mixed this record before and then i redid the whole mix and mixed it in this vsx and this isn't an ad steven slate audio isn't paying me to say this but it translated crazy i showed player one the mix and he was like whoa what did you change it sounds like a whole new mix i'm like well it is but he's like what so yeah 
The translation is crazy. Um, shout out my guy Matt Weiss at Weiss Sound. He told me, yo, listen, your brain and your ears will get used to this. It is weird. It is tricky, but follow, trust the process and follow through with it. And trust me, it works. I, I heard a lot of different things in these studios that I didn't hear just mixing in my studio or mixing in my headphones. So there it is, guys. To recap really quick, because I know this went over. I try to keep it short for y'all. Um, game staging, right? Bring all your, bring all your, uh, bring all your stems in. Highlight them all, put them in a group, whatever you need to do to turn everything down at once. Make sure you can hear the vocals, and then you're just going to want to, whatever room you like first, I like to do this first, the bypass, get it going, because it's always going to start in the middle, turn it up, so you know, and then whatever room you're in, then you want to turn up as well with this, because rule of thumb is... When you're mixing, you want your mix negative six, negative three. You know, some people go over when they send to master and some people don't. Blah, 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 blah. I typically just turn this all the way up and mix there because the song is at negative 11, negative nine ish. I like my life on the rocks, no chance. Yeah, negative eight ish. That's a good place to keep your uh, levels at for mixing and for starting, just for starting, you know, in general. You're going to get higher, especially if you put a limiter at the end, all that good stuff. There you go, guys. This is my run through, my quick how to get started on VSX from Slate Audio, Stephen Slate Audio, I should say. Um, any questions, please feel free. This is brand new, so trust me, no question is dumb. Feel free to comment below, and uh, I'll answer them as quickly as I can. And I'm gonna just keep working on this and getting more content out about this because this is definitely revolutionary. And um, yeah, man. Once again, I'm AT from Headcrack Studios, headcrackstudios.com. Be sure to like, comment, all that good stuff. And if you love me, then subscribe, baby, so you can get a ding every time uh, I post a new tutorial. And that's about it, man. You guys, stay safe, have fun. And if you have VSX, happy mixing. Happy mixing either way. Let's get it.